officials at Somerset County Airport confirmed the crash of a large plane north of that airport, which is located about 80 miles to the southeast of the city of Pittsburgh. We do not know whether that crash of that plane is related to what has become an obvious terrorist attack both here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. Uh, Matt, we just got a late word that uh, State Department security officials are denying those reports of a car bomb at the State Department. Betsy Stewart is at the C Street entrance and also says there is no sign of a car bomb. Betsy Stewart is one of our producers who is very familiar with the uh, State Department. The building has been evacuated. Top officials are still believed to be in the operations center, however. Those are highly secured areas in terms of penetration physically and otherwise. Colin Powell, as Andrea reported earlier, was headed for Lima, Peru, but he's done a U-turn and he's coming back. The president is on his way back. He'll have a National Security Council meeting, we think probably at around 1130 or perhaps around noon. That is likely to take place either at Andrews Air Force Base or in some more secure location. The White House has been evacuated, especially with this report of another plane going down, this time in the Pittsburgh area. There were planes in the air when the order went out that there would be no more takeoffs, so we don't know how much more damage uh, these terrorists had in mind. Let's go to Bob Hager, who is, of course, NBC's uh, aviation expert. Bob, what kind of information are you getting from your sources? Uh, not a lot, Katie, from the FAA. For instance, they are not talking about uh, any possible hijacks. And normally, they can tell when there's a hijack in progress because the, uh, the pilot, uh, the original pilot of the plane, has various buttons that he can push that set off a code and, and tell them that there were hijacks. But maybe as a matter of security, they're not saying anything about that. They did stop uh, all takeoffs in the U.S. at 9 25 this morning and then for pilots that were in the air the question came up what to do about them and they were given some discretion to continue on to their destination so long as it was not the New York or Washington area or divert to an airport if that's what they wanted to do. Uh, I personally I saw the blast at the Pentagon not the blast take place but moments after it I'd been at National Airport trying to get up to New York and you could see that smoke billowing out of the Pentagon. I can give you a little description of what it's like on the streets of Washington because it was quite crowded trying to work my way back here to NBC. Uh, they have now given uh, not only the White House and those key buildings like the U.S. Capitol, but uh, at this point they've given all federal employees the word to leave their offices and get home. Right. So there are traffic jams in Washington. Okay, we, we, Bob, I'm sure you're going to get more information for us momentarily, but first we want to go to Jim McLeshevsky at the Pentagon who has some more information. Mick? Katie, they're still clearing people away from the Pentagon. Uh, still, security forces believe that there may be an, another incoming plane headed in, in the Washington region. But there was a very telling, dramatic moment just a second ago when a U.S. Air Force F-16 flew very low level, did a wide sweeping turn around the Pentagon and back over, the, over Washington. And as one Air Force officer standing near me said, my God, they're now flying air cover over Washington. Uh, a very dramatic moment, a milestone in what Tom has already described as a, as a declaration of war, a uh, terrorist war against the U.S. Can Let's go back and show you the pictures of lower Manhattan where the situation only gets worse, not better. That is the financial district of the world. It's also a residential area and a great commercial area. Both twin trade tower buildings now have collapsed onto the ground. There is an untold loss of life. The ripple effect goes on with all the smoke and dust that is spread out across that very densely populated area. It goes down below ground as well as uh, in the high-rise buildings there. There are many residential structures in that area as well. Some heroic rescue workers were down there trying to get people out of the building when first the first building came down and then the second building did as well. Without any sound and looking at this, there is a kind of a surreal quality. But that is the epicenter of a great, great national tragedy and a great loss of life. No question about it this morning. We're talking about people who were hurt, perhaps killed in this blast. Many of them have been brought to area hospitals, including St. Vincent's Hospital. Bob Bazell is there. Bob, what's the latest? Well, Katie, ambulances continue to stream in. Uh, several New York City streets have been closed. Major avenues have been closed off so that ambulances can continue to come in. Uh, in addition, the New York City subway system has now been closed down, and several buildings that were not involved in the World Trade Center area have been shut down, and people have been told to go home. But a lot of them are just wandering aimlessly on the street, many people openly weeping and hugging each other. This is clearly uh, is a time that, as Tom described, is very close to the beginning of a war. And 
uh, the but the casualties do keep coming in. Burns, smoke inhalation, very severe. And again, uh, all the medical people that I've talked to say this is just the tip of the iceberg. We expect casualties to be coming in all through the night and way into tomorrow and beyond. Bob, if you could just stand by for a moment because we have this report from AP that I'm just simply going to read. A large plane crashed Tuesday morning just north of the Somerset County Airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Airport officials said the plane, believed to be a Boeing 767, crashed around 10 a.m., about eight miles east of Jennerstown, according to County 911 dispatchers, WPXI-TV reported. The crash came the same morning the terrorists crashed two planes into the World Trade Center in New York City, and the twin 110-story towers collapsed. Explosions also rocked the Pentagon and the State Department, although that was refuted moments ago, and spread fear across the nation. There was no other immediate details on the Pennsylvania crash, and it was not clear whether the crash was related to the others. Again, that was a report, a bulletin that was just issued by the Associated Press. You know what is so stunning about all this, Matt and Katie, is that there has been no, no indication whatsoever that this very carefully coordinated massive attack was going to occur. There's been a complete intelligence failure here. Uh, and there will be, obviously, down the road, a price to pay for that. Well, but that's actually not all that surprising, Tom, because we've often talked in the past following every terrorist event about how vulnerable the United States is, and many terrorist experts say how unprepared they are. And the question, of course, is can you ever prepare for an attack like this? Well, the, the, that's true, but we also have people out there who are enlisting post, and we've penetrated these kinds of organizations, but to have this kind of an attack, this sophisticated, this efficient, striking at the heart of the nation's capital, striking at the heart of New York City, now and if this is true that this plane went down as a result of this attack, we don't know whether it's the end of it. Right. This is a massively well-coordinated attack of some kind that is nothing short but a, of a declaration of war on this and country. Terrorist experts are now saying, and intelligence experts are now saying, that there are very short or very few number of terrorist groups that are capable of this kind of planning and, and a couple of names come to mind and I'm not gonna throw them out now because we certainly don't have any reports before I go to Jamie Gangel I just want to say that some of the descriptions coming from eyewitnesses in lower Manhattan of, of these explosions occurring are chilling one man talked about getting off a path train that's a subway train here in lower Manhattan and looking up at the building after the first explosion and seeing people jump out of the windows we have no idea how high up but hearing people on the ground scream each time another person jumped out of a window attempting to get to safety and then when the second explosion occurred he felt the heat of the explosion on the back of his neck Jamie Gangel is our national correspondent she's joining us now on the phone Jamie Matt, you know, speaking of those intelligence officials that you were just mentioning, now finally we can no longer reach on the phone anyone at the CIA. Apparently the CIA has been evacuated. We know the National Security Agency, which is the electronic eavesdropping agency, which is south of Baltimore near Fort Meade, Maryland, that they have been shut down. What we're hearing from both places is that all non-essential personnel have been told to leave. Uh, and I can only imagine that probably they are trying to move some of their operations out of those buildings uh, as well for backup procedure. But in addition to whatever intelligence was or was missed in all of this, we now have uh, perhaps some problems gathering intelligence as those buildings are now being shut down. Right, Jamie, thank you very much. Tom, let's go back and talk about something you mentioned a second ago that is just, it shows the enormity of this situation in addition to what we assume will be horrendous loss of life. All planes in this country have been grounded. I mean, you think about the impact that has, and I mean, is there ever a time we can imagine something like that ever happening before? The most powerful nation in the world, and national security officials and terrorist experts have been saying for some time, a small band of very willful and sophisticated people can bring us to a halt, and they have done just that. There's a psychological terror as a result of all of this, as you can only imagine how it plays out across the country today. People looking in who don't live in New York or live in the nation's capital are wondering what happens around me. Uh, it is hard to overstate the consequences of all of this, and this is just the beginning. Uh, we'll be living with this story and dealing with the consequences of, of it for some time. The United States will change as a result of all of this. We already thought that there was a lot of security in America at the airports and so on, and yet there was a successful hijacking at Boston Airport today, and the consequences of that we're seeing on the screen here this morning. 
So this is going to change this country profoundly in not just the coming days, but the coming months to say nothing, as you have been saying.